How to solve circuits the right way once and for all, and the joys of circuit analysis. This is Vacher Vorperian continuing on with Lecture 4. The examples I'm providing in Lecture 4 can be found in my book, Fast Analytical Techniques in Electrical and Electronic Circuits. In this video, I'm going to work out the example of an ideal operational amplifier with capacitive feedback. We are now going to determine the transfer function of the capacitive T feedback network shown here using an ideal operational amplifier. The transfer function we want is output over input as usual. And we are going to apply the extra element theorem. Clearly, the element that we would like to designate as the extra element is the capacitor, and we'll take it out as an open circuit at first, which also means that you're looking at the circuit at very low frequencies or DC. So what you are determining in this calculation here is the low frequency asymptote of the transfer function. And since this is an ideal operational amplifier, this calculation yields simply the voltage gain of an inverting operational amplifier minus R2 plus R3 divided by R1. We now have to perform two additional calculations in order to apply the extra element theorem. The first one is the ordinary impedance looking back from port 1 when the excitation is set equal to 0. And the second one is the null impedance looking back from port 1 with the response nulled. We have done both of these calculations before, and I'll go over them quickly right now and just state the result. For the first one here, when we set this excitation equal to zero, and this is an ideal op-amp that we have here, its differential input voltage is zero. That means that the voltage across R1 is zero, so it doesn't do any current. There's no current going into the op-amp, hence there is no current through R2. And that means that the voltage Vc, which is the voltage between this point and ground, the sum of the voltages across R2 and R1 both being zero, Vt is zero. Therefore, Vt over It, the ordinary impedance looking into port one, is zero. In the second case, we have Vt connected here while the input voltage is live. This is the excitation of our transfer function, and the two together are nulling the response of the transfer function. And when we do that, output is nulled, the differential input voltage of the op-amp is nulled. That sets Vt directly appearing across R3 and R2. The output is nulled, so Vt appears across R3. The input is nulled, so Vt appears across R2. And therefore, the current It splits between R3 and R2 in a parallel combination of R2 and R3. So that gives us the null impedance looking into port 1 as R2 parallel R3. So we are done with these three independent calculations and we substitute these in the extra element theorem. And now we substitute these three independent calculations in the extra element theorem, H0, script R1 and Roman R1, and we obtain the desired transfer function. And it turns out to be a single zero. It has no pole because we figured out that Roman R1 turned out to be zero. And here's the expression of your transfer function in which H0 is the ideal non-inverting gain. And the zero is given by 1 over C1 parallel combination of R2 parallel R3. Well. What if the capacitor had a parasitic resistance in series with it? Or what if we had deliberately added a, a resistor in series with that capacitor? What would our transfer function have been? Well, you don't have to do any work in this case. You've done everything in the previous slides. The only thing now is Roman R1, the impedance looking back from the capacitive port into the circuit, will not be zero, but will have RC in addition to it. So in this case, all we would have is R1 is to be revised from zero to just RC, and a script R1 has to be revised from R2 parallel R3 to R2 parallel R3 plus RC. And now we have a pole and a zero in this case. And our transfer function has been determined by three separate independent calculations as explained.